Major support for these programs is provided by Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Perfect Building Maintenance, New York Community Bank, All Nation Renovation, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, m and Bank. Additional support is provided by AVR Realty Company, LLC, Ackman Ziff Real Estate Group, LLC, Bingham McCutcheon, LLP, Briarwood Organization, Capital One Bank, C.B. Richard Ellis, James Orfanides, Centurion Holdings, Cushman and Wakefield, Dimes Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, DDG Partners, Eastern Consolidated, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, Friedman LLP, Accountants and Advisors, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, LLC, Genova, Burns and Gian Tomasi, Grubb and Ellis, Investors Savings Bank, Jack Jaffa and Associates Real Estate Consultants, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Madison Realty Capital, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Meridian Capital Group, Margolin Weiner and Evans LLP, Certified Public Accountants and Business Advisors, Newmark Knight Frank, RAL Development Services, The Spandrel Group LLC, Siami Development, SJP Properties, Site Comply, Sterling and Sterling, Stephen Napolitano, The Wickhoff Group, Urban American. Lower Manhattan. What is happening in Lower Manhattan? It is becoming the mecca. It is returning to make it the, the number fourth largest business district in the country. There are things taking place. There's offices, tenants are signing leases, people are going to hotels, people are shopping. Everybody wants to be in Lower Manhattan in Battery Park City. So today, I've assembled the who's who, the, the gurus who know everything about Lower Manhattan. My guests today include Larry Silverstein, the chairman, the president, the CEO, and really the man responsible for, for a lot of Lower Manhattan uh, of Silverstein properties. Uh, Dennis Friedrich, who has a, a, a good amount of property in Lower Manhattan, probably close to 10 million square feet. Dennis is the president and chief investment officer at Brookfield Office Properties. The consigliere to Douglas Sturz, the man who helped negotiate the lease with Condé Nast, Gary Rosenberg, senior partner at Rosenberg and Estes. And last but not least, you don't talk about Lower Manhattan. If you don't have anything with residential, retail, office, it's my good friend Joe Mornian, chairman of the Mornian organization. So Joe, you and Larry have been in Lower Manhattan longer than anyone here probably. Well, I thank you for putting me in the level near Larry, but I'm not never near Larry. Larry is in a different level no, than no, I am. I'm, uh, uh, I'm, putting, I'm putting you <laughs> in, 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 have seen the evolution yeah. of Lower Manhattan yeah. from the yeah. 90s and yeah. everything. You have seen, way. you know, if you've seen, um, I remember when uh, Mayor Giuliani changed the law with the 421G and the revitalization of downtown Manhattan and, um, where he brought in the plug and go program, bring the technology companies downtown and allowing you to convert all the buildings into residential buildings, giving you a, approximately a 10 year tax break and all of that. And um, it was a um, 10 or 15 years of uh, ramping up, mostly good times in development and acquisition and all of that. And then came the 9-11, which was the low. And um, the last uh, few years, uh, once we got most of the politics out of the area with the help of our mastermind, master developer, uh, Larry, um, World Trade Center is uh, moving forward. I, Thank I God. Mean, you know, fortunately, our good friend was a little bit away from the World Trade Center on 9-11. Otherwise, we'd, we wouldn't that have would be our here. Cool. be here. But Larry, I mean, you 
with seven, with what you're doing over there. Tell us what's happening now. Seven is what, 93% occupied? Uh, we've got about 150,000 feet left of the million seven. So we're about 90, 90 plus percent occupied. Seven has turned out very well and we're very fortunate. Um, what's going on, what's going forward now, uh, most important thing is the signing of Condé Nast uh, for a million square feet um, in, the, in one World Trade Center. Uh, enormous, enormous validation of everything we've been talking about trying to accomplish so put downtown. Uh, and uh, that's of, of great import. Uh, but the Freedom Tower, when you look at it today, it's up to about the 70 Six. some odd floor, 68 floor, 69 floor. Right. Uh, but, and it's, it's got what, another 30, 30 some odd, or so. 30 odd floors to go. So that's way up there. And it's really, really uh, impressive as hell. Um, and, uh, and then we also have under construction um, Tower 4, uh, which is designed by uh, Fumiko Maki, Japanese architect. Um, and that one is up at about the 30 some odd, 30th floor uh, and rising about a floor a week. Uh, and so that's moving quite well. That's ultimately going to have 72 floors, about a two and a half million square feet of space in it. And then immediately to the north of that, we've got foundations going up uh, for Tower 3. Uh, that will have uh, about 2.8 million feet of space and rise to a height of about 78 stories. And then to the north of that, uh, the work on, on bringing Tower 2 up to grade is going forward. <coughs> that building will be about the size of the Empire State Building, uh, have about uh, 3.1 million square feet of space. Top so out in, in total, what are we going to have in the Trade Center? Altogether, when it's, everything is done, but probably an ex a little excess of 10 million square feet of office and space. And does that include seven that you? No, exclusive seven. It's, it's 10 million square feet That's over there. How many square feet is in Battery Park City of office? The office, the World Financial Center is eight and a half million. So, yeah, yeah and, and look at the World Financial Center. When they built the initial World Trade Center and took the, the literally the, the stone and everything, the yep. foundation, and built Battery Park City. And I still remember going down there when Lefrec had this ugly, Ugly uh, residential, which was a tax, you know, it was a tax exempt deal yeah. because the neighborhood wasn't there. And you walk into Battery Park City and what Brookfield has done, and you know, and what you're going to be doing with the retail. Let's talk about the retail, the, the redevelopment. Sure, the retail. and it's retail and also other improvements in the center. I think we, you know, we see, Michael, a lot of a lot of investment opportunities uh, around the world. Frankly, well, the thing, uh, the one that we're most excited about is actually investing in in Lower Manhattan. We think it uh, it'll generate the best uh, returns for us. We're uh, planning to move forward with a plan to invest uh, over three hundred million dollars in uh, retail improvements, but also major common area improvements. Some of which will address the changes uh, that are happening at the Trade Center site, the, the positive changes that Larry is helping move along and the, the way the financial center will be accessed. So we're creating a, a new glass pavilion, which will be a new front door for the financial center, but also importantly connected so with what's happening. So the glass pavilion will be on West Street? Yeah, it will be, it'll be on the western side of West Street. The, connect, the main connection into the financial center is uh, now going to be below West Street. That's a you know, material change from what it was historically on a bridge system. And uh, we think it's important that we link the financial center as part of this this incredible connectivity think, that's happening in Lower Manhattan. Having that, the link underground right. on that situation. So we're going to create that as uh, the financial center has had multiple front doors, but this will be an iconic uh, centerpiece uh, and also create a connection. And in addition to that, we're going to... Uh, make some significant lobby uh, renovations, but most importantly is retail. We're going to expand the retail, uh, rework it, and we just see it as a, as a great opportunity. Do, do you, I don't th I'm not sure if there's any land, because can you build another hotel in Battery Park City? Yeah, at this point, the, the the lots are all the plots are all built out. Last residential building is going up, but the uh, right. you know that being said, the uh, Goldman Sachs is actually they're opening uh, up a they're opening up a, a, con uh, a like major a four, hotel four replacing and a half, the embassy. A four and a half star, nearly as good as Joe's W Hotel. You know, <laughs> have to remember, but you know you. I call Joe first, and then if you know if it's he's over booked, <laughs> no, but, but, you, but you know you look at it this way: there is nothing downtown like the W. I mean, well, there's nothing but, like it. But, needless to say, one day there's going to be a Four Seasons. Yeah, yeah. but right. they, they really won't be competitive with each no, other. No, there's two, yeah. the two different two products. Different, two but, different products. But, you know, um, but Joe's, Joe's W is a, an exquisite building. I see, I look out my windows, I look south, I see Joe's building every morning. It looks great. Thanks. Absolutely terrific. Thanks. Very so, handsome. Thanks. So how did, you know, Douglas, who really was never a man to be downtown, I mean, you know, he was on 3rd Avenue, then they moved up to 6th Avenue. At one time, when his father was alive, they were going to move to 8th Avenue. 
how Douglas and you guys, because you've been this constantly after over 25 years, this go downtown and saw the vision and insight of what Larry and Dennis and Joe have seen for years. We, we've been very fortunate in um, being able to pick our times. So 15 years ago, we uh, were able to uh, do build four times square. Condé Nast moved there. And um, within five years, five million, six million square feet of office space was built in Times Square, filled up instantly. Um, we saw the opportunity um, downtown, uh, a rare opportunity to be able to work on a building that's there, fully assembled. Uh, somebody went through all of the difficulty in getting it all together. <laughs> <laughs> and so the opportunity was there. And we really decided that this is something we should look at. Um, we've never looked downtown before. Um, we saw, we see now New York becoming a market of older buildings and newer buildings. And it's gonna be less important whether it's uptown or downtown, or whether you're in a state-of-the-art building, or whether you're in an old building. You know, th this is a good point that you bring out. Many people over the years have always said Lower Manhattan is the low-cost alternative. You know, people have said, you know, because Class A office buildings, you know, in the in the Plaza District, the rents are way over $100 for certain buildings, 9 West, you know, 767 and so on. Um, how do, do you see the rents ever, you know, in the near term, reaching what the high rents in, upper, you know, in the Midtown will reach? Larry, Dennis? My sense is that we're beginning to see um, a gravitational shift, if you will. Um, Midtown was always the leader in terms of rents because it, was always a, it always appeared to be a more desirable place to, to live, to work, to function. <clears throat> With what is coming downtown, the quality, the architectural quality, for example, of these buildings. Um, we had David Childs do seven. Uh, David Childs also did the design of the Freedom Tower for us before we ceded it to the Port Authority. Um, we also had Fumiko Maki do Tower 4, uh, Richard Rogers Tower 3, uh, Norman Foster Tower 2, each world-class iconic architects, each Pritzker Prize winners, each with first-class building credits to their credit around the globe. Then you have uh, Calatrava designing the PATH Terminal, magnificent structure. You have, uh, uh, you have the Memorial, uh, the 9-11 the the Memorial Museum designed by Snowheader. Uh, you have Michael Arad's design of the Memorial Park. Um, you have uh, you have uh, um, the uh, then Frank Gehry and his design of the Performing Arts Center. Uh, I mean, it's going to be an assemblage of extraordinary architecture. Lower Manhattan quite beautiful. is and the, the newest buildings. Yeah, you know, right. even when you take the World Financial Center, they're only twenty what twenty five years old. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're, we're at an area which has the newest and the latest, and, you know, you've maintained your buildings and even upgraded them to these, to these heights. You know, and so that's, you know, and, and it, it's interesting because people want to be in green buildings. People want to be in LEED certified buildings. They, they're, they're looking for this. And, you know, the transportation, when the transportation hub is finished, makes this situation. But my question is, when... In, is it five years? Is it ten years? I mean, will we see hundred dollars square foot rents downtown? I, sure, absolutely. Yes, I, agree. I think when uh, a few, you know, the delta has always traditionally been somewhere between thirty-five and forty percent, or whatever you take on average. Which, uh, but when when certain things come online and 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 certain things converge, which is going to be a matter of a few years, right? Uh, most of the major tenants in the market right now are making decisions by the time they were to move in. Uh, I think Condi would be one of those examples and some of the other major tenants. Most of the infrastructure will be in place. Uh, what the other, you know, the other thing we're finding in our discussions, and I think Larry's probably finding the same thing, is there's a push for uh, efficiency. Uh, almost 80% of the stock in Manhattan predates 1980. Uh, so they're starting to really reflect on that more and more and say, all right, we need to be, we need to consolidate in the right buildings. And if I can then get an amenity package of uh, brand new infrastructure, which is going to be unmatched in North America, 
clearly in probably most of the world. And then at the same time, a residential neighborhood that is now the, you know, probably the hottest uh, highest growth residential area. About it's a thousand people living down there. Yeah, but when we a, talk about uh, residential, we get you. How many buildings you have in residential? We have a handful of uh, residentials downtown. But to um, add to what um, Larry and Dennis um, into how far would the downtown rents come? Uh, I want you to know <clears throat> for the hotel in terms of occupancy and in terms of uh, ADR rate per night. Uh, Compared to my hotel in Manhattan, Midtown, you're not you're not far. You're not so. A couple of weeks ago, I did a show on hotels, and I had I had Larry Corman of AKA who own, operates some very good hotels in Midtown. He said, "I'm looking to be in Lower Manhattan." Right. And I had Hersha who op manages and owns hotels there. They love Lower Manhattan. Cool. The occupancy is great. You it's know, great. people visit. You know. Where else do you have it's Century becoming, 21? Forget uh, exactly. the Century. <laughs> but that is becoming a destination also. And, and it is a destination. You know, uh, our new Rockefeller Center or our new <laughs> World Trade Center, it's also a, what we have, 5 million visitors before. And I think with, the, with what's happening now, this September, it would, it would break now, you know, the record. Gary? I, th I think Joe's point before of what happened with the residential conversion in downtown is what you critically need again. Yeah. Because you are now, we're gonna bring 5,000 employees from Condé Nast, right. and they're gonna wanna live either in Tribeca and pay $60 a foot, or the same lucky distance. lucky to go to Tribeca and pay $60 a foot. Yes. That's the problem. Uh, I mean, but downtown, downtown has a need. So I'm saying that that's where there's gonna be an unbelievable yeah. run up in rents, in my opinion. <laughs> plus the opportunity to convert, but the government's got to step forward now so that it's in place four or five years from now because we are going to have an influx of people who aren't going to want to be traveling from the Upper West Side. But, but you know what else we might need, and, and, and Larry was you know, the man who took care of this when Larry created the nonprofit building. You know, the nonprofits of, of the world literally cannot afford the rents and everything. And what you did a number of years ago, the initiative, mm -hmm. maybe we should take another one of these, a couple of these class C and D buildings where a nonprofit who cannot afford $50 a square foot can afford to be down there. Or even uh, my you know, other, other concept could be some of the upstart creative firms start to get you know, incubated buildings that are a lot of the, the media or the creative content firms can't afford so, hundred dollar so, rents. So relates. just eat I off mean, of that. BP, Battery Park City, the World Financial Center, you've had financial service companies right. and major professional service firms. Now we see Condé Nast, so we're in a media business. Do we see, do you think that we'll see, I mean, you know, because I'm, Right now, the Daily News is down at four New York Plaza. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, there are other media. D perhaps do you see this becoming a mecca of media? It could. It could. Why not? You're seeing that trend to a certain extent. I think, you know, Condé Nast, in terms of a, a content creatively oriented firm, has just put the exclamation point on it, I think. But when you look at the last, f you know, 15, 20 deals of size, uh, trans lease transactions of size, there's a lot of diversity in publishing that mix companies. That publishing companies. That's what I mean, media nobody publishing. says yeah. Nobody says we don't welcome banks, especially foreign banks, yeah. if they come. Yeah. You know, we welcome all, uh, all of them as well. Nothing nothing uh, but, wrong with having a center but, but for... You know what, uh, I, I, I keep reading in the news banks. about some bank up in Stanford that's actively considering moving to New York. Uh, you, know, the, the, you know what? I'm filing Can you imagine? I, I'm, no, it's not his confidentiality. There was that's a, why I read the No, no, I, I happen to read, I happen to read the, the Connecticut because I read a lot so I could write on... There was a nice article in, in one of the Connecticut newspapers saying these people don't want to be in Stanford. I mean, the, the, you know, the traders aren't there. They don't want to be in. I mean, what, what do you do at Stanford at night? I mean, I remember when I was in. You get Apollo, on the train and come down. You get, that's exactly right. To I mean, in Tribeca. We, we couldn't. We had done a conversion of an apartment house, and we couldn't. We couldn't sell it because people. It's a very nice community. There's nothing wrong Lovely. with Stanford, yeah, yeah. but people want to be in the Mecca. I mean, it's why do we have why why are rental buildings doing so great in Manhattan? Because everyone wants to come to New York City. You know, it's like they graduate from college and they say, you know, I'm moving to New York City. Yes. So why shouldn't Lower Manhattan be the Murray Hills for the next two years? Very true what you're saying uh, because um, because of 
world, the new World Trade Center and the impact that it's making internationally, all over between the news and everything. And of course, we have a W brand, which also has 50 hotels around the world, which makes also a big impact. But I want you to know that we are doing very, very well selling condominiums. And most of the buyers at the highest prices in downtown Manhattan are mainly from out of this country. There is an article, which I'm going to send to you, that yeah. just came out about GCC companies, which are the Gulf companies from mm -hmm. uh, you know, the uh, Saudi Arabia, right. talking about people looking for apartments from the Gulf countries yes. on Wall Street. Yes. I think it was just, and you know, when I was on vacation, I mm -hmm. happened to see you on CNN International mm -hmm. talking about the Seven World, uh, right. about the, the W. Right. And people want to, you yes. know, the foreign yes. travelers on the yes. weekend, what's happening yes. in Lower Manhattan, you can't get it's through. It's very exciting. Yes. It, Matter of fact, that whole area, the Wall Street area, the Tribeca area, right. has, has transformed itself totally. And it's become today a mecca yeah. for young people mm -hmm. who, um, my, my daughter Lisa moved from Scarsdale down to Tribeca. She said on the weekends, the place is unbelievable. Right. The and activity, then, and the then life. And then if you look, you know, a number of years ago when Tony Goldman took care of some of the restaurants in Stone, Stone Street over there, I mean, you know, it, it's changed. You know, you do have Tiffany's, you have Hermes, mm -hmm. and I think... A BMW great, was on. Right, BMW <laughs> and... <laughs> but, 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 you know, you look Our at the Wall situation... Street. You know, which is downtown Tribeca, uh, the Bed Bath and Beyond, mm -hmm. and uh, the Barnes Whole and Foods, the Whole Foods are doing great. It's all there. I yeah. mean, it, you know, everything is there. I mean, it, it's really going there. Well, but what I happens a, when ten thousand, twelve thousand, fifteen thousand more people a day are there? Yeah. So I have one. I have one question because we do have a, a an individual who owns some office buildings in Jersey City. You know, the guys in Jersey City. You know, some people consider Jersey City and Hoboken the sixth borough. And if you saw what happened with Panasonic, with the incentives of what the city of Newark, it's Newark and the state of New Jersey gave away to, to lure this company over there to lure them seven miles, do we have any potential comp, you know, problems with Jersey City? I like Jersey City because he owns it, but <laughs> Jersey City and Hoboken taking, you know, poaching some of those good customers? I think you're going to see continued interest by aspects of the major corp major companies who will want to locate downtown, move some of their operational centers and other other diverse users to New Jersey where the cost is significantly less. I mean, Goldman Sachs, for example, built a whole building on uh, But they moved back. <laughs> they moved <laughs> a lot back. I, I mean, they, 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 had, they, had a, they had a little problem. They said, a little bit. You want to go there? It's like UBS. Mm -hmm. The traders want to go to, you know, what, what are we going to do in Stanford at night? Go, go to uh, Red Lobster? You know, but interestingly, right. <laughs> there, are, there are users for space uh, on the other side of the Hudson, less costly space. Right. And that, that's right. the simple part of it. Well, I think the, the, the progress in uh, Jersey City or Hoboken and, uh, and downtown Brooklyn, the, the, the residential progress, uh, progress actually feeds lower Manhattan uh, because a major decision maker and tenant can now draw from, a, you call them bedroom communities, more like urban I, communities I, that I, I, I are attractive. I was out, I, I ran into Murray Kushner, who just built a 40-story building in Jersey City. He said, you know, we're doing great. And he said, yeah. you know, where they, they, they work in lower Manhattan because it's a path ride. Yep. You know, the, you have to remember the path is really great, you know, to Jersey City and Hoboken, you know, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a great improvement. And then, you know, look what also happened with the 1,900 units of brand new construction in downtown Brooklyn. Those people, you know, you like working, live work where you are on, on that situation. What about the retail situation today? I'm not worried about when Westfield goes into the new buildings. To, we were talking prior to the show about the retail today. That's lacking in Lower Manhattan. I, th I think, as Larry says, a lot of new uh, retailers are coming, but I also think that we have an image issue. And I think the retailers, especially the food and beverage establishments that exist downtown, are doing better than people um, think they are. And um, if you go to the top... 20 eating and drinking establishments in Manhattan, it's very difficult to get a, a table. They're, they're really busy. Do we have enough? No.
but the thing who the thing is who we have doing very very well and of course with all the new development with all the new residents there is plenty of room for for much more getting back to my question on the the nonprofits what do you see do you see another maybe possibility of a nonprofit building in lower manhattan or what, or what dennis sure. was saying about the incubator situation which yes, i both. think is a great both. idea on yes, that both and i think the city will encourage will continue to be encouraging and supportive because space those those older buildings, uh, first of all, about 14, 15 million square feet of older buildings, all the office buildings, became converted to residential use in the 90s, right? And then the last 10 years, that, that process continued to where it is today. But uh, there are many, many more buildings downtown that will be facing the same, right. f the same factor of being inefficient to the point where it's only good for retail, for residential, not good for commercial. And those buildings will get converted. And so some, some of those buildings could be very good for the, for the, for the plug-in type businesses uh, that'll be coming downtown, uh, non-for-profits also. I mean, these are, these are all possibilities, but I think continued conversion uh, of, of outdated office space to residential will, will be part of our lives going forward uh, forever. I think that's, as these buildings become more outmoded, as businesses require greater efficiency, newer technology, lead certification of their space and so forth. Uh, that's going to be the, 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 the reality of the day. But it's, it's so also the thing that will make place. it a 24-hour neighborhood. Yes. Yeah. Once we have more and more conversions, yeah. more people living there, you will get everything you need for a 24-hour neighborhood. Right. And that'll just feed on itself. And to have that, you know, remember, there's no place else where you could have 10 million square feet, be able to have... 10,000 apartments. Right. You got 100,000 people that right. are going to be housed in the right? office workers. Move in. Where else do you have that kind of land next to any kind of commercial well, space? There's also, there is, yeah. right. also, there's a lot of um, inquiry that I see uh, with educational uh, mm. schools. I mean, I mean and you know, Claremont that. did well. Yes. The charter schools, I mean, the yeah. schools in Battery Park City are unbelievable. And people. a lot of health-related. Some of the best with Stuyvesant. Yeah, and really a lot great. of health-related uh, tenants, health, education, all of those are, we're getting a lot of requests. Right, and, and you know, you know, Ratner's building over there, you know, the, the large residential and what, uh, New York Downtown Hospital. It, on my 11th season, which will start in September, I want everyone oh, back. <laughs> and because I want to promote and continue to say that Lower Manhattan is a great place to live, work, and shop. And I'd like to thank Larry Silverstein, Dennis Friedlich, uh, Gary Rosenberg, and Joe Moynian. See you next week. Major support for these programs is provided by Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Perfect Building Maintenance, New York Community Bank, All Nation Renovation, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, m and Bank. Additional support is provided by AVR Realty Company, LLC, Ackman Ziff Real Estate Group, LLC, Bingham McCutcheon, LLP, Briarwood Organization, Capital One Bank, C.B. Richard Ellis, James Orfanides, Centurion Holdings, Cushman and Wakefield, Dimes Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, DDG Partners, Eastern Consolidated, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, Friedman, LLP, Accountants and Advisors, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, LLC, Genova, Burns, and Gian Tomasi, Grubb and Ellis, Investors Savings Bank, Jack Jaffa and Associates Real Estate Consultants, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Madison Realty Capital, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Meridian Capital Group, Margolin Weiner and Evans, LLP, Certified Public Accountants and Business Advisors, Newmark Knight Frank, RAL Development Services, The Spandrel Group, LLC, Siami Development, SJP Properties, Site Comply, Sterling and Sterling, Stephen Napolitano, The Wickhoff Group, Urban American.